Welcome back to Bucked Up Custom. I'll save you guys some time. What we're going to be doing is getting on the road here in about 30 seconds to get on our way over to Iowa. We got to go pick up a new project, which is a 1949 Ford F100. But we also have this 1979 GMC 3500, also known as a K30. While it's unknown what we're going to be doing to this 3500, I can assure you guys this F100 project we got to go and look at is well worth the time. Let's make our way down to get the trailer, and we'll be on the road. If you guys are new to the channel and haven't already, please consider smashing that like button and possibly subscribing down below. Bucked Up Customs is one of the newest parts to my channel where we take broken and rusted metal and turn them into some rolling works of art. With road travel taking about three hours, I'm gonna fill up at the pump real fast and then get on my way so you guys will see us when we get to this farm. Three hours later. That should be our driveway that we're gonna be turning into, but giving you guys an update on what the description of this sale is. This is a 1948 F100. It's got the 233. It's not the flathead V8, it's a flathead six. And it's missing quite a few parts on the powertrain, but it also is rotted away to a point where I think we're going to have to do quite a bit of sheet metal fabrication. I don't know exactly where this thing is, though. Well, there's something. Let's take a wild guess that that's probably it. The owner says he only wants 1200 bucks for it. It's basically just scrap iron to him. It's been sitting collecting dust. And yep, that would be a Ford hood. And this is the condition it has been left in. That is a lot of surface rust. The majority of everything at least seems to be still in place. I guarantee you those brakes are locked up and the tires are starting to sink into the ground. The bed's got a couple holes in it, so I'll probably have to do some work on that. Might end up doing a wooden bed, or if we just want to, we'll leave it as a metal bed. Inside looks clean for the most part. You can tell those gauges haven't worked in probably 30 years. I can see through the radiator anywhere. I really should have brought a creeper so I could at least climb underneath this thing. It doesn't look like it has any, like, puddles underneath of it, but I wonder if that just means it's been out of fluid for the last 20 years. I'm going to go talk to the owner, though, see if we can strike up a deal. We'll get this thing loaded up on the trailer and get ourselves a plan of attack on our way back to the shop. A few moments later. Thousand dollars later. The best plan that we're going to do for this truck is once we get the body structurally sound, I want to attack the powertrain and put a lot better motor in this. I'm thinking a 460 crate, but we'll have to see. There isn't any time like the present, so let's get on the road, head back to the shop. Let me know down in the comments, guys, with Memorial Day weekend coming up, what are your guys' plans? Are you guys going to go out camping? Are you going to go fishing? Are you going to go boating? I know it's supposed to be pretty warm where I'm at. I don't think I'm going to get out nearly as much as I used to in previous years, but that's okay. When you're on the grind to get 100k subs, sometimes you just got to keep grinding. The truck towed very, very well, and the other thing is that it's also cool to see the history of an F-350 from 2017 pulling an f100 from 1948 like just look at the history and the difference between these two vehicles i don't see the gmc sitting next to the apache so i don't know if it's in the shop but we're gonna at least try and get this thing unloaded i didn't look and yes it is on the lift that's good news for us now unlike our dodge from the last video this truck actually does have a transmission so kevin is already inside He's going to roll this thing back for us. I'm going to guide it just to make sure it doesn't fall anywhere. Nice. Nice. That's the way I like it. But boy, is that body in some rough condition. We can at least do ourselves a favor and get the elephant out of the room. Taking our first good look at this F100, I see a lot of surface rust, but I'm also seeing a handful of spots like down on the rockers where it is starting to rot through. Our fender wells are doing the same thing. The floor of the bed has obviously seen a lot better shape. This wooden on the side is rotten. I'm probably going to end up just removing those. I am going to reupholster the interior. It's probably going to stay the same because I actually kind of like this white bench. But in classic 50s fashion, whatever we actually have as the color of the truck, we're going to paint the, the inside dash and the trim as well. 
As for the K30, we need to make sure we have brake systems checked because this truck's not even nearly as bad, but we will have to repaint it. We're going to look into the suspension, see if we can get ourselves some bigger wheels, better rims. We will need to go and get a bed, and I think there's one of these trucks sitting down at the Copart that we could maybe get a bed from, but I think that one has trim on it, so we'd have to get trim for the front portion of this cab, and that's not going to be as easy as I think it's going to be. I think between these two trucks, though, our first plan of attack is to start working on the mechanical aspects of this F100. Let's head into the office and start looking at what we're going to get. While I could definitely just go to Ford Performance and get myself a 460 Ford racing block, I don't really want to put 575 horsepower into this thing. So what I'm actually going to do is there's a couple companies out there that will just rebuild old 460 big blocks. And I think that's what we're going to end up doing. This is one that we can get for about $3,600. And we'll obviously have to have our own transmission, which I do have one on order. It's a four-speed. And any other corresponding parts being custom headers. We also have all of our ignition wiring. You know, just other big things that go into automotive projects. In order to support all that power, though, I am going to have to put in a beefier rear end with probably some a uh, lot higher gears. So I might put in some 410s, maybe 373s. Either way, we're going to roll this over to our engine bay and start working on tearing out the small 226 flathead 6. I thought it was a 233, but the 233 is the flathead V8. Before we get started, it's going to be a great idea to make sure to get all of our old fluids out. So we'll get oil drained, as well as our transmission fluid, just like so. Properly dispose of all of our old fluids. And start working on all of the fasteners that hold on our headers, engine mounts, and transmission. My suspicions have been confirmed. The frame is gone. In all seriousness, though, I could obviously pull the motor with the transmission out through the hood. But what I'm also going to try and do is so we can get a size comparison for the transmission we want to buy. We're going to drop the transmission first, then we'll get the engine out. Three cross-threaded bolts and a very angry blowtorch later... The old transmission is out. The one downside to this truck is that the hood does not open on it, even though there is like an actual engine model in it. So we're just going to act as though we are pulling out a tiny little inline six so we can better prepare for our new 460 that will be dropping in. While leaving Kevin on the Ford to start working on the engine removal, I am going to at least get Daryl started on the paintwork for the GMC. It's got a lot of sanding that needs to be done. There are a lot of dings and dents. Plus, we still will need to make that field trip down to the Copart to see whether or not we can find another bed that would match this truck. Even if we have to buy like the fenders separately, that's fine. But I just need a good bed. Maybe even a tailgate because those are some really deep scratches. I wouldn't expect anything less though from what looks to be a state truck at some point because the rockers are completely rotten away. And the hood's not too far behind it. Daryl, you're in charge while I'm gone, all right? Don't mess any of this up. I know you're on your smoke break, but you're in charge. Clearly, he does not care that I'm taking his truck. If you guys have not checked out Agritono's Chevy 3500, this has become one of the staple trucks of this channel now, only because it's known as Daryl's truck. If you see a red Chevy 3500 Silverado, I always will look at it now and go... That's Daryl's truck. It's a very good quality mod, and you guys can get it on console, just it'll be a lizard version, obviously, not an actual Chevy. Let's head inside and see if there's anything that we might be able to find in the lo in this yard that we could possibly pull a bed from. Yeah, don't worry about me. I'm just back to look for another truck bed. Conveniently, another square body. You happen to know if you got any more square bodies? There's one in the back? That really reassures me. Oh, that 350 is still sitting there. Well, we don't need an engine. If we needed an engine, we'd have enough vehicles out here with some big blocks, but... Aha! I bet you this is the one he's talking about. The issue is, that's a single bed. That's not a dually bed. It's got bed liner in it, though. What? What is this doing here? Oh! Yeah, there's no motor in this. Plus, the inside looks like it's seen a little bit better days. I mean, not terrible, but I don't think this is really a Copart truck. That that seems like you could have gotten some money for it if you sold it on Marketplace or something. The bed's in almost pristine condition, so I think this would actually be a really good steal. Plus, it does... Ah, it's got the trim, though. I can work with that. I could try and find maybe some trim, or I could take the trim off the front part of this truck, and then we just fabricate something to the back to match the rest. I'm not too worried. I think this is what we'll probably work with. 
Let's head back into the office and get this stuff paid for. We're going to need the bed, the bed trim, and the cab trim off of that old Chevy out back. Would you do two grand for all of it? Nice. $2,000 later, and we are on our way to making this thing look fantastic. We'll get this loaded up, take off all the cab trim, and hopefully we'll have our stuff for the GMC. I'm not taking the grill, though. Later. Kevin, give me the rundown. Is it looking good? Are we ahead of schedule, behind schedule? What do we still have left to do to that F100? Sheet metal work and ordering the parts. I can do that. Did Daryl happen to get started working on the sanding for the K30? You did? Okay. You stay out here. I'll just take care of the rest. Oh, yeah, he did. Still looking better. It's got a lot of work still left to do with the rust department, but... Daryl! Sanding looks good. Yeah, she's definitely got a ways to go, but I think that bed will definitely help out, and we might actually be able to save these dually fenders. We just might. Looking at some of the wheels we were going to pick, we had uh, three options. We had these American Racing 5 spokes, which had a, a chrome ring, darker gray accent. Kind of a nice shape in reality. The other options were these custom torque thrust Ds from American Racing. We would have put 15 by 7s in the front and 15 by 10s in the rear. Give it a really big stance. But honestly, I think we're going to end up settling for these Keystone Classics. When I think classic Ford Mustang, this is the wheel that comes to mind. Just like about the American Racing Rims, though, we're just going to put 15 by 8s of those all the way around with some BF Goodrich radials. This truck's got some work to do. We'll catch you guys back in a few weeks, give or take. That'll give us some time to do the body work on the truck, get all of the extra parts removed, and get that truck possibly ready for paint. So let's jump ahead, and we'll see you guys in a bit. Three weeks later. Welcome back, everybody. We finally had all of our parts show up for this beautiful F100 that is now ready to go in not the paint department, but in our powertrains. We have our 460 big block. We have to put all of the additional components on it to make sure this thing runs. And we have already done all the sheet metal work on the truck, at least. So that part is nice. We haven't done any of the rest of it, but we at least got the important stuff. We have our brand new rear axle that is a huge 410 gearing in the back. And I know this transmission looks the exact same as our three speed, but it is a four speed manual gearbox with some custom long tube headers currently on their way. I don't know about you, but I think this is going to look really, really cool. Of course, we won't be able to actually see the motor inside of this, but this truck is going to be able to scoot. That's successfully all tightened down. We have our 460 big block installed in the truck. I completely forgot to, but we ripped off the wooden planks in the back. Let's get this thing over to the lift. We'll install our new long custom long tube headers along with our four speed gearbox and the new rear differential plus drive shaft. Don't mind the fact this is actually a front axle, but we even got ourselves a chrome diff cover. There we go, torque it down. This truck was able to stop. We did notice that the brakes and the master cylinder were still in make work for now, but we are gonna have to upgrade the system to probably some three piston Brembos. With our wiring installed, our exhaust system a go, and a temporary fuel tank system right now, let's give this thing a quick uh, turn up and see what she sounds like. That is a sound that I can live with. I'll tell you what, those long tubes sound really good right about now. See if we can get this thing into gear. All right, so there's one. There's two, three, four. Just like every other manual before. Put it then first, see whether or not we actually got moving. Oh yeah, she moves. The question is though, can we stop? Oh, with ease. Okay, that's reassuring. I don't want to drive this thing too far because we obviously said we haven't figured out the, the, full, the full thing of it yet. I'm just going to take out my tire that I'm not even going to reuse anyway. Jumping back over to the GMC, it seems that Daryl is ready to send this thing off the paint. We also do have our wheels on order for this truck. 
We're going to start working on the body to get ready for paint on the F100. We'll catch back with you guys when that stuff is good to go. Tomorrow for sure. While the Ford is in the paint booth getting painted up, we know it's got some primer action going on over there. We got the old GMC nicely done. It's been a lot of work. We've been about two weeks in the making right now, but we finally had the new chrome wheels as well as BF Goodrich all-terrain mud grabbers come in that we're going to be putting on this truck. There is one. There is two, three, and four. Obviously, if you count the duels, that's technically six tires. But we only replace this outside one because the inside tire you never see and it just gets beat up and chromed up. They usually don't decorate the inside room. It's only the outside one that's usually decorative. And this truck is just about ready. We got one last thing left to attach to it and get a few other uh, pieces added on, like our bumper trim, fasten those completely. Get our step sides fastened on as well. And a gooseneck hitch in the back. Until the parts arrive, though, we are just going to set this thing in our engine bay because we don't want the paint to be getting scuffed up. Sounds like Daryl's getting ready to start painting this sucker. I am so excited. I like can't wait to see what we have this truck turn out to look like. We do have our set of wheels should be here tomorrow. We'll get this truck painted up and we'll start revealing what this bad Bamba Jamma looks like. In corner number one, we have the ketchup inspired GMC 3500. This thing has been redone with all of its brake system and has a 6.2 liter Detroit diesel. Oh, this truck turned out looking nice. We did also install LED headlights, a new set of trim that went all the way around the truck, giving it a nice, beautiful touch. I think, though, let's head to the main event. Inspired by the classic American Graffiti, I give you the 1948 Ford F100 banana truck. I don't think this truck could have turned out any better. Look at this thing. Those keystones, they absolutely seal the deal. Let's get on the main road and let this 460 scream. That is so much faster than that tiny little flathead. Holy cow. Well, thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Bucked Up Customs. I hope you do enjoy videos like this. If you have and you did, please consider dropping a like as it helps support the channel and grow as that race to the 100K. We have plenty more projects where that came from. And with Memorial Day weekend being this coming weekend, you guys could probably expect me to be doing some Memorial Day action on the Homeowner Series coming Tuesday. But thank you all for tuning in. We shall see you all in the next one. This is the Rental Man out. Peace.